जून के तो दे दो पार्टिसिपल्स and you need finite and non finite verbs to understand the types of clauses as well okay so after finite non finite verbs we'll do types of clauses and if you understand clauses it is going to help you in identifying simple compound complex so you don't have exactly that topic given simple compound complex but they there is one topic in your syllabus which is called coordinator and subordinator now essentially the subordinator and coordinator are the conjunctions and which we use in clauses conjunctions are used in clauses or in simple compound complex sentences so whatever we are going to study today it is going to cover five six topics together okay because we'll be learning about conjunctions phrases clauses fine so collectively you will learn all these topics So let us start with compound words. And after discussing clauses, if we get time, I'll also cover the subject verb agreement topic. Okay. Let's see what are compound words. This is a very simple topic from your language study part. When two words are used together to form a third meaningful word, the new word thus formed is known as a compound word. This new word will have a different meaning than the two original words. This new word does the work of a noun, an adjective, or some other parts of speech. so how are we uh, forming compound words by joining two two words which are meaningful but when you are going to join them together they will form a new meaningful word now how to form a compound words compound words can be formed by joining two words sometimes the two words okay this is important point are written separately okay so that is also a possibility sometimes they are written as one word and in some cases you may need to put a hyphen between the two words okay so look at the examples prasanna why you have raised your hand everybody please pay attention when i am explaining and when i give you something to solve you can ask me your doubts in the chat box okay so your full i want your full attention towards what i'm saying and if you are raising hands there is this yellow window you must be able to see it okay don't raise your hands while i'm explaining please so door plus way gives us doorway so doorway is written as a one word and doorway is called as a compound word moonlight they write it collectively so see moon is a meaningful word light is a meaningful word and we are joining it to form a new word moonlight which is a compound word easy going so easy going we use this as an adjective that he is a very easy going person 
well oiled well oiled see these words are written with a hyphen so you may have compound words written with hyphen oil rich two words are written separately but it is a compound word clock tower again two words two words written separately but it is a compound word now what you have to remember the compound words to be formed is made of two different words with independent meanings and whether the word can be used as one word combined word or a phrase that has a different meaning from the two original words so compound word will have a separate meaning from the words it is formed of okay it will not have the same meaning the meaning will be different okay these examples the question is choose the correct compound word from the given alternatives so you you may get a question like this quotation cowboy correctly indirect now look at the options given here if you look at quotation it has a suffix added to it correctly again ly suffix is added indirect in so prefix is added right but if you look at the word cowboy cowboy is made up of two meaningful words cow and boy so cowboy is the compound word okay try to solve the remaining examples you have to choose the word which is a compound word yes i have talked about the pdfs you should receive it okay i have forwarded that message that many of you have not received the pdfs i have talked with the admin department they said uh, they will look into it okay okay the passages which you will get for comprehension will be easy don't worry see i'm deliberately giving you difficult questions so that you are prepared if you prepare for difficult questions your actual paper will feel easy okay okay raj alphabetical order is nothing but you just arrange the words in uh, the correct alphabetical order means let us suppose 
this fourth question in fourth question these words are given to you high speed appealing walk slow walk slowly and momentary and you are supposed to write it in alphabetical order so alphabetically you will check what is the first letter h a m and w so which word will come first alphabetically appealing you have to write them in the sequence as they will appear in a dictionary let us suppose all words are starting with the same letter b then you will check for the second letter which letter will come first and then you will arrange so appealing will come then after high speed then momentary and then walk slowly that is alphabetical order okay the dictionary order how the, these words will uh, appear in the dictionary clear no when you add prefix or suffix it is not a compound word please remember this any prefix or suffix does not make a compound word compound word is made up of two independent words headache is a compound word yes Okay, test link. Yes, I received the message. Had upset branch students have not received it. I'll I'll talk with them. Okay, I don't have the link. Okay, admin department is handling it, so they will share it with you. Don't worry. Percent word can be written as separately as well as together as a one word. Okay. Generally, it is preferred as one word. No, accountant is not a compound word. No, no, this this you are not supposed to join, solve as alphabetical order. I was just explaining how to solve the alphabetical order. Okay. Now let's see the the second one. What which is the compound word here? Disbelief, forgiveness, race horse, and going through. Yes, compound words can have a hyphen between them, or they can be written as two separate words. You just have to see whether these two words have a meaning independently. Then that is a compound word. So here, option C is correct. Race horse. Race horse is a compound word. Next, encouragement, calmness, handicap, and foothills. Which is the correct one? going through is not a one word foothills foothills is the compound word high speed appealing walk slowly momentary which is the correct one option a yes particularly gentleman between and greenery here option b is correct gentleman correct accountant headache steering and worker the correct answer is headache yes cold cream drinking inverted and jumbled option a correct corrugated splendor attentive steering wheel option d steering wheel correct expensive fault finding reception and wrestling option b is correct fault finding yes correct is this topic clear compound words i'll be sharing more uh, practice examples but what you have to look for what you will remember you should be able to break the word into two words and if those words both the words must have meaning to it okay then only it is a compound word no walk slowly prithvi do you use walk slowly uh to refer to, see it's a verb clearly it's a verb walk slowly it's not a compound word hmm? 
let's now see. Okay, Balaji Nagar students have also not got the worksheet. Fine. I'll forward your message. Prasanna, what is your specific doubt, Prasanna? What you have not understood? Compound words is when you join the two words, two meaningful words. Now, race horse, look at this word. Race has a meaning, horse has a meaning. But when you join together, you have a race horse, one single word, which is again meaningful. In, nothing is here a prefix or a suffix. Or here, if you look at forgiveness, ness, any, any ss is a suffix added to the word. It's not a meaningful word. Yes, walk slowly is not a compound word. All right. Now let's see. Finite and non finite. Finite and non finite. Oops. Okay, pay attention. First, I'm going to explain. This is a different topic now. Come out of compound words and pay attention here. Finite and non-finite verbs is a classification of verbs essentially. So see, this also, so this is also covering a part of, uh, you have parts of speech and verbs are one of it, right? So see, when you di discuss this topic, we are covering number of topics. Now, what are finite and what are non-finite verbs? Verbs can be divided into two categories. Finite verbs are governed by the person and number of the subject. Governed by means what? When the person, that is subject of the sentence, changes in person or number, the verb also change. Means if my subject is first person, second person or third person, or whether my subject is singular or plural, depending on that, if the verb is changing, verb is changing means what? Its form changes. The form of the verb changes. Then that verb is called as finite verb. For example, now look at the three examples given here. I am driving down the lane. Bandana drives to college. They drive very fast. Now see here, in the first sentence, you have driving. It's a continuous tense, right? I am driving. Pandana drives. But when you make the subject plural, they, it becomes drive. If I'm going to change the tense, if I make it past tense, then it will become drove. So what is happening? The verb is changing based on the subject as Tense, then it is a finite verb. Now, what is a non finite verb? It is opposite to finite verb. Non finite verbs do not change their form even when the person and the number of the subject changes. So, even if my subject changes, even if I change the tense, the form of the verb will not change, it will remain as it is. For example, see, I want to eat something delicious. Bandana has to eat apples every day. So if you check these two sentences and if you compare them, we have changed the subject from first person to third person. We have also changed, um, in the third example, it is plural. They want to eat eggs for breakfast. So even if your subject is changing in person or number, the verb to eat has not changed. So this to eat, we will call it as non-finite verb. 
in the above sentences the verb eat does not change even though the person and number of the subject change so that's why it is called non finite verbs now non finite verbs again have three kinds which you have in your syllabus gerund infinitive and participles what is a gerund gerund is the ing form of the verb which is used as a noun okay i'm repeating what is a gerund verb plus ing but it is used as a noun in a sentence then we will call it as gerund so it is also called as verbal noun gerunds are called as verbal noun means what look at the examples reading is important running is a good way to keep fit now reading running what are these these are verbs with ing suffix correct but am i using these verbs as verbs in these sentences no i am using them as subject of the sentence reading is important what is important reading so in this particular sentence reading even if it's a verb plus ing i am not using it as a verb i am using it as a noun as a subject of the sentence then it becomes gerund reading is important reading is subject of the sentence is is the verb and is is, is important is the predicate of the sentence second example running is a good way to keep fit what is a good way to keep fit running so again running even if it's a verb plus ing we are not using it as a verb we are using it as a noun as a subject of the sentence so this is a gerund what are gerunds in short remember gerunds are verb plus ing used as a noun they are verbal nouns gerunds are verbal nouns so they can be used as either subject of the sentence as well as object of the sentence okay this is first type of non finite verbs second type is infinitives the infinitive is the base form of the verb what is a base form original form of the verb when you have the verb in its pure form without any suffix no ed added no ing added original form of the verb is called as its base form so infinitives are nothing but base forms of the verb and we will use them in a sentence as it is it is often used with to or without to so infinitives can have to before them or they may not have to okay if there is to added to it they are called as to infinitives look at the example david and i agreed to meet at 4 o'clock so to meet is an infinitive to plus base form of the verb meet if you observe there is no suffix and you will never find a sentence like this david and i agreed to meeting at 4 o'clock never when you add to to the verb we cannot add any suffix to it so to meet is an infinitive i will arrange to see the dentist straight away so to see is infinitive to plus base form of the verb now you may have bare infinitive in a sentence as well what is a bare infinitive means what if to is not present in the sentence okay to is not present in the sentence but the verb whatever verb is present in the sentence is in is in its base form then you will say that that is the infinitive in that sentence i'll give you an example i like mangoes so here like is infinitive because like is used in its base form this is second type of non finite verb infinitive first was gerund verb plus ing used as a noun what are infinitives two plus base form of the verb are infinitives and if you observe infinitives they do not change with the tense see i like to eat mango 
I liked to eat mango. I will like to eat mango. So see, even if the tense is changing, to eat is not changing. To eat is not changing its form. That is why it is non-finite verb. And the third type of non-finite verb are participles. Now you already know present participle and past participle when we discussed about tenses, when we discussed about voice, active and passive voice. We have already used the past participle, right? So we already know that participles are used to form sentences in different tense. So there are two kinds of participles. One is present participle, which is nothing but verb plus ing. And past participle, that is nothing but third form of the verb. So you will have suffixes as d, ed, en, t, n to the base verb, that is past participle. Now they can be used as verbs. We already know that. I have been reading. Here reading is a present participle used as a verb in a sentence. I have worked. Worked is a past participle used as a verb in the sentence. Okay. But uh, these participles can also be used as an adjective. Okay. Present participle as well as past participle can be used as an adjective in a sentence. A participle is a verb that ends in ing, present participle, or it will end with ed, d, en, right? That is past participle. And these participles may function as adjectives. What are adjectives? Describing or modifying nouns. So instead of using them as verbs, we can use them as adjectives. So they will come before the nouns. Then they are called participles. See, look at the examples. The dancing parrots entertain the crowd. Now, if you look at the underlying word dancing separately, without any context, just if I say dancing, it's a verb plus ing. It is a present participle. But here in this particular sentence, dancing is used to describe the noun parrots. So it is used as an adjective. Second example, the burnt sailboat washed up on shore. Again, what is burnt? Burnt is a past participle. But in this particular sentence, it is used as an adjective. It is describing the noun sailboat. So burnt is used as a participle. So what are participles? They are verbal adjectives. Present participles or past participles used as an adjective. Understood? Gerund, infinitive and participles. Okay, let us solve the solve few examples. Okay. Now this is the exercise for you. Finite and non-finite means what? Okay, you keep solving side by side. I'll I'm explaining. Finite. Finite se artha kaiye. Finite manje kaiye. Something which is limited. There is a restriction or something which is limiting it, right? It is finite. Non-finite, there is no limitation, right? So finite verbs, what is the limitation on them? That if the subject or the tense changes, they change their form. And if the verbs are not changing, their form with subject or tense, then it is called non finite. Rushikesh, what you have not understood, Rushikesh? What do you mean by normal Hindi?
Yes, yes. I'll I'll send these notes. Okay, I'll let increase the font. Okay. Students, give me a minute. Yes, I'll scroll. Yes, wait. Gerund, Nishita, Gerund, I'm repeating. Huh? Hindi, Rushikesh, my Hindi is not so good. I can either speak in English or Marathi. Gerund is when you use verb plus ing as either subject of the sentence or object of the sentence. So, reading is my hobby. Reading is subject. So, that is gerund. Okay. Smoking is prohibited. Smoking is gerund. Yes, so gerund will be used as subject of the sentence or object of the sentence. Correct. And participle. What is the difference between gerund and participle? Participle also has verb plus ing, right? But when it is participle, it is used as an adjective, not as a noun. So please remember, gerunds are verbal nouns. Participles are verbal adjectives. Okay? Not always Vedant. No, no. Not necessary that gerund will always come at the start of the sentence. No. You have to check what is it what is it functioning as. Yes, that's it. Okay. Let's see the answers. Okay, I'll give you an example of participle. Mm. I saw the movie Burning Train. Now burning train. What is a train? Train is noun. And I'm using burning to describe that noun. So I'm using burning as an adjective. So it becomes participle. Correct. No. Uh, okay. 
Yes, Shravani, correct, correct. Okay, tell, tell me the answers now. Okay, somebody is asking me how many PDFs I have sent. I think on the first day I had shared seven, seven PDF documents. And yesterday I, I have shared four. See here, in the following sentence, identify the underlying word, whether it is gerund, participle, infinitive, or verb. Jennifer said the best place to go on Friday is playtime pizza. So to go is an infinitive. It is an infinitive, correct. To plus verb, base form of the verb, correct. Second and same question. The plan accepted by the committee involves a tax cut. Here it is used as verb. It is main verb of the sentence. Accepted. Option C is correct. Yes, it is option C. Correct, correct. So you have to be very careful. Yes, both are verbs, Anushri. Involves and accepted. Both are used as verbs here. Correct. Identify the phrase in the following sentence. Infinitive, you have to identify. No need to copy paste your doubts again and again. Don't do it. Okay. If you send it to me once, I'm I'm I will be able to read it. There is no point in copy pasting it so many times. Jacob was the first student to volunteer for the cleanup crew. So now here, what is infinitive? Two plus verb, base form of the verb. Correct. So here, to volunteer is the correct answer. A gerund is a verb that ends in, gerund will end in what? Gerund will always end in ing. That is option C is correct. Can gerunds be subjects? Yes or no? Yes, gerunds will be subjects, correct. A participle is a verb used as a or an. Participles are used as an adjectives. Correct. Does this sentence contain a gerund? The dancing bird danced. Is there a gerund? No, there is no gerund here. Dancing birds, dancing is used as an adjective for the noun bird. So it is a participle, not a gerund. And last one. An infinitive will almost always begin with two. Option D is correct. So I hope all of you have got the idea of finite and non-finite verb, right? Don't don't uh, remember like this that if there is a noun in a sentence it's not a gerund no look at the verb and see what is that verb's function in particular sentence dancing bird answer is no there is no gerund here because dancing is used as a adjective for bird Yes, Vedant infinitive can start without uh, two as well. Yes, I'll be sending extra practice worksheets. Yes, yes. I have just selected a few questions just to give you an idea and I can discuss other points. Okay. Dance is also not a gerund. Gerund is never come. Gerund will never have ED. Gerund will always be 
विथ व प्लस आय एन जी मी हे नोट्स तुम्हाला शेअर करणार आहे हे रुल्स तुम्ही पुन्हा एकदा वाचा ठीक आहे करेक्ट विदाउट टू विल बी कॉल्ड ऍज बेर इन्फिनेटिव्ह फायनेस्ट कसं ओळखायचं ऋषिकेश म्हणजे काय व्हॉट इज युअर क्वेश्चन जेरन कॅन बी सब्जेक्ट और ऑब्जेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट म्हणून पण येऊ शकतो ना जेरन आय आय सेंड यू द वर्कशीट येस पार्टिसिपल इज यूज ऍज ऍडजेक्टिव्ह येस पार्टिसिपल इज वेन यू आर युजिंग ऍडजेक्टिव्ह पार्टिसिपलचे दोन टाइप्स आहेत पास्ट आणि प्रेझेंट so if you are going to use it as an adjective in a sentence then it is a participle look here um see me tumhala same example ni explain karte baka i have been reading let us suppose if i take this example hmm finite tumhala olkhala yenaras nahi finite verbs nahi switcharnar kodi non finite switcharnar hmm हिअर आय हॅव बीन रिडिंग रिडिंग काय वापरले आपण इन दिस पर्टिक्युलर सेंटेन्स रिडिंग इज अ प्रेझेंट पार्टिसिपल पण आपण ते इथं वर्ब म्हणून वापरलंय करेक्ट वी आर युझिंग इट एज अ वर्ब हिअर इन दिस पर्टिक्युलर सेंटेन्स आय हॅव बीन रिडिंग येस स्टुडंट येस ऑर नो आय हॅव बीन रिडिंग रिडिंग इज यूज एज अ वर्ब हिअर करेक्ट now if i say i have been sitting in the reading room see what is my sentence i have been reading i have been sitting in the reading room now the reading room is the reading used as a verb now no it is used as an adjective for the noun room clear so that you have to understand if it is used as an adjective if it is describing some noun in the sentence not always sakshi participles can be used as verb as well as adjective but only adjective okay then only you will call them as participles if you are using verb plus ing and please remember participles has two types present participle and past participle gerund madhe ase type nahi hai gerund is always verb plus ing used as a noun clear okay आता बघितलं ना आपण आर्या इथं एक्झाम्पल आहे आता डान्सिंग पॅरंट्स डान्सिंग हे पार्टिसिपल आहे ना व प्लस आय एन जी आहे ना पण तू याला इथं वर्ब म्हणून वापरलेस का नाही आपण त्याला पॅरेट्स ला डिस्क्राईब करायला वापरतोय आता ते वर्ब म्हणून वापरलंय का ऍडजेक्टिव्ह म्हणून वापरले ते तुम्हाला सेंटेन्स वाचून ठरवावं लागेल ना नो पार्टिसिपल नॉट कम अंड जेरन पार्टिसिपल कम्स अंडर नॉन फायनाइट वर्ब्स पार्टिसिपल जेरन अँड इन्फिनेटिव्ह दीज आर थ्री काइंड ऑफ नॉन फायनाइट वर्ब्स पार्टिसिपल आर सिम्पल टर्म्स रिमेंबर पार्टिसिपल आर वर्बल ऍडजेक्टिव जेरन आर वर्बल नाउन्स इन्फिनेटिव्ह आर टू प्लस बेस फॉर्म ऑफ दी बुक सिंपल जेरेंट इज अउन पार्टिसिपल इज ऍडजेक्टिव किती सेपरेट किती वेगळं आहे तुम्हाला नाउन आणि ऍडजेक्टिव्ह मधला फरक कळतो ना नाउन हे ऍडजेक्टिव्ह असेल का कधी नाही 
सी आई एम यूजिंग वो प्लस आई एन जी हियर एज एन एडजेक्टिव पैरेट्स डिस्क्राइब करते ना विच पैरेट्स डांसिंग पैरेट्स बट लुक एट दिन Reading is important. Now, is reading describing any noun here? No. Reading itself is acting as a subject. So it is clear. And yes, sir. The class will be till two o'clock. Yes. Okay. सगळ्यांनी दोन मिनिटं डोळे मिटा आणि दीर्घ श्वास घ्या आपण आता नेक्स्ट टॉपिक स्टार्ट करणार आहे क्लॉजेस येस चेतन वॉट इज इट चेतना यू कॅन सेंड मी युअर डाऊट इन द चॅट बॉक्स ओके रुद्र अल्फाबेटिकल ऑर्डर मध्ये काल तुम्ही बघितलं असेल कालच्या पेपर मध्ये टेल मी द फर्स्ट वर्ड लास्ट वर्ड द मिडल वर्ड असं तुम्हाला सांगत असेल राईट सो इफ देर आर फाईव्ह वर्ड्स द थर्ड वर्ड विल बी विल बी द मिडल वर्ड Infinitive is type of non-finite verb. Who is this? Uh, yes, comprehension is a passage that you have to practice in your own practice. Okay? Yes, Ruth, can you please करेक्ट करेक्ट अल्फाबेटिकल ऑर्डर इज जस्ट लाईक द डिक्शनरी ओके रेडी फॉर क्लॉजेस नाव Yes, Swapne. Yes, we have we have discussed compound words and finite, non-finite. Now I am explaining clauses. Okay. To understand clause, my voice is low. Okay. Is it better now? Okay, now you need to understand the difference between a phrase and a clause. Okay. And there are three types of phrases, three types of clauses. What are those types? Adjective, adverb, and noun. Okay. Yes, Manasi, I read your, I read your message. I'll check it. Okay. now pay attention now here everybody don't think about anything else 100% focus and listen listen just listen actively listen and try and grasp it first recall what is the function of noun in a sentence what does noun do in a sentence noun 
is used as a subject in a sentence it is used as object in a sentence okay so that is the function of a noun what is the function of an adverb the function of adverb is to modify the verb adverb is going to give extra information about the verb what is the function of adjective adjective modifies nouns so it describes a noun it gives us extra information about the noun so we know that noun can be a single word adverb can be a single word an adjective can also be a single word but instead of writing a single word if we have groups of words two three words together functioning as adjective functioning as adverb or functioning as noun then we get adjective phrases or adjective clauses adverb phrases or adverb clauses okay so instead of a single word what do we have groups of words doing the same function okay the function has not changed so if functions are clear in your mind you will understand the types of phrases types of clauses as well now first understand what is a phrase phrase is a group of words now here particularly they are talking about adjective phrase adjective phrase is a group of words which does the prasanna i am trying to explain wait first listen what i am explaining and then ask me the doubts okay group of words which does the work of an adjective phrase will be group of words which is going to work as an adjective but a phrase will not have subject and a predicate look at the example the vizier was a wealthy man now here wealthy is an adjective now instead of writing this if i write the vizier was a man of great wealth so of great wealth is a group of words is there any verb present here in of great wealth there is no verb present means it does not have any subject or predicate so this is a phrase why adjective phrase because of great wealth is describing the noun man that is why that is why it is adjective phrase now look at the definition an adjective phrase is a group of words that does the work of an adjective look at these examples a golden crown golden single word used as an adjective instead of that you can write a crown made of gold a purple cloak a cloak of purple color so of purple color becomes a phrase and if you look at these phrases you will observe there is not a single verb present here specifically i'll say finite verb now you know what is a finite verb huh? there is no finite verb in a phrase an elephant with a white skin a track through the jungle a boy with blue eyes so with blue eyes becomes a phrase but if suppose i expand it more i expand these words more and add a finite verb in it then it will become a clause okay now i'm going to show you adjective clause so you'll be able to compare the two okay we have seen adjective and adjective phrase now see what is adjective clause look at the group of words in the italics okay the umbrella with a broken handle is mine now see umbrella is the noun and with a broken handle these words are describing the noun umbrella so these are group of words which are describing the noun umbrella so i will call this as adjective phrase this is a adjective phrase because they are describing a noun they are 
doing the function of an adjective. Now the same sentence can be written as look at the second example. Sorry, the umbrella which has a broken handle is mine. Now look at these words. Which has a broken handle is mine. Again, which has a broken handle is describing what umbrella, which is a noun. So I have these group of words which are describing a noun. Now, if you look at the highlighted part here, tell me, is there a finite verb present in these in this group? which has a broken handle. Is there a finite verb? Yes, and what is it? Has. Has is a finite verb, correct? Which was not there in the previous example. First example, Madhya Hotaka verb with a broken handle? No. But here we have a finite verb. So this is a clause. This is not a phrase. So what is a clause? Clause is group of words which have their own subject and predicate. Then they are called as a clause. A subject and predicate. Predicate to have a predicate. What is the requirement? There must be a finite verb present. Then it is a clause. And particularly this clause is functioning as an adjective. That is why I will say this is adjective clause. Look at the explanation given below that. The first group of words with a broken handle describes umbrella. That is, it qualifies the noun umbrella. And the work of an adjective, it is what we call an adjective phrase. The second group of words which has a broken handle also describes the umbrella and so does the work of an adjective. But because it contains a subject and a predicate of its own, it is called as an adjective clause. So for a clause, what is the requirement? The clause will have its own subject and a predicate. In other words, you can remember a clause will have a finite verb present in it. Then it is a clause. Now look at this example again. The umbrella which has broken handle is mine. I can break this sentence into two parts. The first part will be the umbrella is mine. And second part is which has broken handle. Now tell me, in this entire sentence, how many finite verbs are present? There are two finite verbs. And which are those? Which are the two verbs present here? Has and is. Correct? Yes. So as there are two finite verbs, there are two clauses. Okay, So you can note this point. Number of finite verbs equals number of clauses. Clear? Also, let me tell you which one we will call as main clause and which one will be the subordinate clause. The main clause will be the umbrella is mine. Full stop. Because it makes sense on its own. The umbrella is mine. It has a complete meaning. So it is a main clause or it is also called as independent clause. And which has a broken handle is called dependent clause or subordinate clause. Why dependent or why subordinate? Because 
you cannot just write which has a broken handle full stop is it making complete sense if you write which has a broken handle will it make complete sense on its own which has a broken handle no it won't you need the rest of the part to make sense correct we need to write the umbrella is mine which has a broken handle then only it makes sense means this part of the clause is dependent on the main clause clear up to this what we have seen what is a phrase what is a phrase group of meaningful words but it will not have a subject and a predicate what is a clause clauses are also groups of words but they will have subject and a predicate but the simple thing to remember is a clause will have a finite verb present in it then it is a clause now clause can be a independent clause or dependent clause when will you call it as independent clause when it is making sense on its own without any help without any help of other clause if it makes complete sense means if it can qualify as a meaningful sentence then it is a main clause and if a clause depends on the other clause to complete its meaning then that is dependent clause or subordinate clause and we have three types of subordinate clause samartha i am not going to answer your question i am not going to do it because you are just copy pasting your doubt tela kahi hi arth nahi hai mi magashit sangitla tumhi tumche doubt ekda liha mala vachta yeto tu parat parat te copy paste karnat vel ghalavto hai pan majha bolna kade laksha det nahi hai मी तुझा डाउट वाचलाय तुमचे डाउट वाचत वाचतच मी एक्सप्लेन करतीय व माझ्या एक्सप्लेनेशन मध्ये तुमचे डाउट चा आन्सर येणार आहे तुमच्या हे लक्षात येत नाही की तुम्ही तेच कॉपी पेस्ट करत बसण्यामध्ये तुमचं लक्ष तिकडे जात आहे आणि लक्ष माझ्या बोलण्याकडे नाहीये इच मिनिट इज इम्पॉर्टंट इच वर्ड आय एम सिंग इज इम्पॉर्टंट Harshal, it won't happen that subject is absent. Object can be absent. Object is not compulsory. Object na su shabd sentence mein, but subject will be there. But what I'm saying is, don't go into which is subject, which is object, which is predicate. Not necessary. Me tu mana simple trick kai sangitli. Finite verb bhai kabaga. Finite verb manje kai. Tu mala non finite verb kala na ta. जेरंड इन्फिनेटिव्ह आणि पार्टिसिपल ते नाहीये म्हणजे फायनाईट वर्ब आहे आता इथे येस लेक्चर इज स्टील टू ओ क्लॉक येस इथेच बघा विच हॅज अ ब्रोकन हँडल इन दिस ब्रोकन ब्रोकन वॉट इज इट इट इज अ फास्ट पार्टिसिपल राईट सी इट इज युज ॲज अन ॲडजेक्टिव्ह करेक्ट सो ब्रोकन इज नॉन फायनाईट वर्ब हि but we have another verb has which is a finite verb so that is why it qualifies as a clause clear let's solve few examples kal ch examples baka tumhala aankhe chan pade we have just uh, finished with adjective clause okay adjective clause what is the function of adjective clause it is going to describe a noun in a sentence it is going to give you extra information about the noun okay read the first sentence mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow what you are going to do yes nishita main clause will also have a finite verb that's why i i asked you to write out 
number of finite verbs is equals to number of clauses. So if there are two finite verbs, there are two clauses, but you will have to find out which is main clause, which is subordinate clause. Now look here, Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. See, I can separate it into two parts. Mary had a little lamb can be of the first half and whose fleece was white as snow, second half. These are two clauses. Observe, are there two finite verbs? Mary had a little lamb. Pratnya, I am explaining again. What is the finite verb here? Had. Had is a finite verb. Yes. And look at the second half. Whose fleece was white as snow? What is the finite verb? Was. Exactly. So how many finite verbs? Two. How many clauses? Two. Now let's see, which is the main clause? How will you identify? See if you can write that clause independently. Is it making sense on its own? Now, whose place was white as no? Will you write this as a sentence? No, but first half can be written as a sentence. Mary had a little lamb, full stop. It is making complete sense. So that is main clause, which is the Subordinate clause, whose place was white as snow. And if I ask you, what is the type of subordinate clause? It is adjective clause. Why adjective clause? Because it is describing the noun, lamb. Getting? Look at the second example. The letter brought money which was badly needed. With practice you will get it. The letter brought money which was badly needed. Try to make two parts here. Which are the two clauses? The letter brought money. This is the first half. And second half is which was badly needed. Check. Are there finite verbs present? Brought is the first finite verb. And second part, which was, was is the second finite verb. So two finite verbs, two clauses. What is the main clause? The letter brought money. And which was badly needed is subordinate clause. And what is the type? Adjective. Why? It is describing the noun money. So, what you are going to remember? First, try and identify the clauses. Separate out the clauses. Then separate out or identify the main clause and subordinate clause. After you do that, look at the subordinate clause. And see with what part of the main clause it is relating to. Now, which was badly needed? What was badly needed? Money. Means this clause is giving me extra information about the noun money. Now, what gives extra information about noun? Adjective. So, this is adjective clause. Simple. I have not explained noun clause. I have only explained adjective clause. Have you understood the adjective clause? Look at the third example. One more example. The house that I live in belongs to my father. Now see, the subordinate clause is placed in between. The house that I live in that I live in, these words are describing the noun house. And what is the main clause? The house belongs to my father. So the and two finite verbs, see, live, 
and belongs two finite verbs two clauses main clause the house belongs to my father subordinate clause that i live in which house that i live in so adjective clause clear now if you have understood this it will be very easy to understand adjective clause adverb clause sorry why adjective clause is doing the function of adjective adverb clause will do the function of adverb what is the function of adverb to describe verb right See now, adverb clause. First example: They rested at sunset. So rested when at sunset. What is it? It is a phrase because there is no finite verb. But the same information can be written as: They rested. when evening came when evening came when did they rest when evening came so i am getting the information about time and this clause is relating to the verb rested see when evening came are you getting any extra information about the noun here any noun no when evening came is not describing any noun it is giving us it is relating to the verb it is modifying the verb rested rested when when evening came so this becomes adverb clause so a clause which will function as an adverb is called adverb clause let's discuss examples you may sit wherever you like see how many finite verbs are present you may sit wherever you like which are the finite verbs sit and like correct so you may sit becomes main clause and wherever you like becomes subordinate clause and why adverb clause because it is relating to the verb sit where can he sit wherever he likes look at the second example he fled where his pursuers could not follow so two clauses are he fled main clause where his pursuers could not follow subordinate clause type adverb why because it is relating to the verb fled पर्स्युअर्स पाठीमागे पकड़ा चलने ऑल्सो यू मस्ट हैव ऑब्जर्व सबॉर्डिनेट क्लॉजेस आर ऑलवेज स्टार्टिंग विथ सम कंजंक्शन वेर एवर वेर So you will always have a conjunction. Subordinate clause always starts with a conjunction, and main clause and subordinate clauses join with the conjunction. Hmm? Also, please remember, it is not necessary that main clause will always come at the start and subordinate clause will come after it. No. Look at the fourth example. Because you have done this, I shall punish you. now tell me which is the main clause here
I shall punish you. Correct. I shall punish you is the main clause. And why? Why I'm going to punish you? Because you have done this. So, because you have done this is adverb clause. Clear? Adverb clause. Adverb and adjective clause are similar. Adjective clause is going to relate with the noun in a sentence. Adverb clause is going to relate with the verb in a sentence. Okay? I will be sharing this PDF with you all. So you can again go through it. Okay? Yes. Yes, Harshal, subordinate clusters type us that. No, you don't ha have to uh, write the types of adverb clause, not necessary. If you identify just adverb clause, it is enough. Okay, somebody is asking me, Aditi, yes, fourth one here. You want me to explain this. See, I am monarch of all. I survey. I survey is the subordinate clause. Yes, I will be sharing this PDF, Aditya. Yes, this, this PDF is actually from Renan Martin book. So if you have the book with you, it will be easier for you to refer. But I will share this, okay? Yes, I'll show you, Aniket, how the options will come. Yes, first let me explain noun clause so that I can... Uh, send you worksheet as well and we, we can finish with this topic as well. Okay, ready everyone? Pay attention. Yes, Akanksha. Yes, if you want, I'll share the answer key as well for these work, these exercises you want, the exercises from this PDF. I will share the answer key as well. Now everyone, please focus. Focus. We are discussing noun clause. Noun clause is a bit different from adjective and adverb clause. Noun clause is not going to relate with anything of the main clause. Noun clause itself is going to really pay attention. Noun clause itself is going to act as a subject or object in a sentence because it is a noun clause. We call the function of nouns. What is the function of nouns in a sentence? Nouns are used as subject or objects, right? So instead of just one word, if you have entire clause acting as a subject or entire clause acting as an object, then that is a noun clause. Look at the examples. First one. I expect to get a prize. Now what do I expect? What do I expect? To get a prize. Means in this particular sentence, to get a prize, which is a phrase, is acting as an object. Do you agree? I expect to get a prize. To get a prize is acting as an object. Entire phrase is acting as an object. So this is noun phrase. Why phrase? There is no finite verb. To get. To get is infinitive. You know this. That is why this is a phrase. Now look at the second example. I expect that I shall get a prize. What do I expect? What do I expect? That I shall get a prize. Now first tell me, is this a clause that I shall get a prize? Is this a clause? Yes, it is a clause. Why? There is a finite verb, shall get. Finite verb is present. Which is the second finite verb? Expect. Correct? So I expect this part becomes main clause. 
correct harshal if it is object you will ask what to the verb correct so i expect is main clause and that i shall get the prize is subordinate clause now why this is a noun clause because this entire clause is acting as an object of my sentence ya purna vakyach that i shall get a prize is acting as an object that is why it is a noun clause karan being object is the function of a noun you can have just okay now how you are going to check whether your answer is right or not try to replace the noun clause with a with a noun just replace it with a noun and see if it makes sense okay now i'm going to replace this that i shall get a prize with a noun i expect a gift what do i expect a gift so a gift is object of the sentence right so yes i am able to replace the noun clause with a noun so my answer is correct that this is a noun clause is everyone getting what will be the function of noun clause noun clause will itself act as either subject or object of the sentence okay i'm going to explain two examples look here i often wonder how you are getting on if you try to break this into two parts which will be the two part i often wonder yes priyanka i'll finish in 2 3 minutes i often wonder first half how you are getting on second half okay so what do i wonder how you are getting on so this entire clause is acting as an object that is why it is a noun clause second one i fear that i shall fail you what do i fear that i shall fail you that i shall fail sorry so noun clause he replied that he would come what did he reply that he would come so see entire clause is acting as an object you don't have a single word as an object we have clause as an object so that's why this is noun clause okay i'll show you one example with subject of the sentence look at the ninth sentence that you should say this is very strange right take two parts here what are the two parts two parts that you should say this is very strange what is very strange that you should say this correct so this entire clause is acting as subject of the sentence clear noun clause all types of clauses so hum participles are verbal adjectives yes i'll i'll share this pdf and its answer key as well so first uh, very sincerely solve Mm, one second. The exercise, and then you can check. Okay, and like this, I will share you MCQs as well. See, you will get a questions. You can get questions like this. These are the sentences, and they are asking what is the highlighted part, or what is the type of. Can you see this word document? so see highlighted part is dependent clause or independent clause john did his homework before he went to bed so the highlighted part is independent clause like this okay or they may ask you to identify the type of clause all right 
Okay, I'll stop here today. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Okay, listen, I'll be meeting you in the next week now. So, in between, I'll be sharing worksheets and notes, okay, for you to study the simple parts, simple points. Yes, bye bye. Bye bye.